Homo habilis is one of the first members chronologically of the Homo family and is considered one of the first real tool users. At one point thought to be the direct ancestor of modern humans, the importance of a proven, evidence-beginning point to our evolutionary branch cannot be overstated. Whether that is Homo habilis is, as always, debated. Before we begin, we just want to take a second to talk about our sponsor for today's video, which is Babbel, the number one language learning app in the world. This is our go-to app for getting accustomed to a new language so that we can get you guys the most accurate pronunciations. La Politica. La Politica. La Historia. La Historia. Babbel houses multiple interactive ways to learn languages, which include games, live lessons, podcasts, videos, etc. Whether you want to connect with long-lost relatives, plan your next summer vacation in an exotic country, or just want to understand human nature through a different culture, Babbel is the app for you. We love the fact that the lessons on the app are designed by real language teachers as opposed to monotone machine algorithms. Click the link in the description box to get up to 65% off your Babbel subscription and start speaking a new language in three weeks. Gracias. Now, let's jump back to the video. When we discuss the beginnings of human evolution, we go back millions of years. When we have that much time to look across, science does the best it can. Theories are made and debated, evidence is re-examined, and what we think we know is overturned. We have mentioned in previous videos that covered other hominins that science doesn't have the full story yet and we try to take into consideration the new information as it is revealed. Like and subscribe to A Day in History and check out other videos covering archaic humans and other bits of history. In 1960, some unique and distinct fossils began to be discovered in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. These fossils were determined to be from 1.75 million years ago and different to the Paranthropus boisei fossils also found in the area. P. boisei are Australopithecans, one of the pre-homo species related to archaic man. These different fossils weren't the same as P. boisei, but were not within the definition of possible Homo species at the time either. After considerable debate, the fossils were mostly accepted as the first evidence of Homo habilis. This was an amazing discovery. We as human beings finally had a point in time that we could point to and say that our genus started here. This is where the traits that define humans could begin to be seen. Habilis could have been a distance walker, capable of traversing long distances across grasslands or savanna. They were thought to eat meat in significantly more quantities than previous species, allowing those extra calories to be used to possibly make bigger brains and increase overall size. Handyman Habilis was believed to be the first significant toolmaker, possibly the first, depending on interpretation. As time went on, more remains of Homo habilis were found. Dating as far back as 2.3 million years ago and as late as 1.65 million years ago, it is believed this species existed for almost a million years. It was the twig on the tree of life that grew into the branch we rest at the end of now. The physical appearance of habilis was inferred from the discovered remains. Standing roughly 3.5 to 4.5 feet tall and weighing in at an average of 60 pounds, H. habilis wasn't a large animal. Legs that could have been long enough to facilitate long-distance traveling and arms long in proportion like apes are attributed to them. The hand of habilis had long dexterous fingers capable of gripping and assisting in climbing. Speaking of hands, Homo habilis was so named in reference to the assumed capability to make and handle tools. In the early Stone Age, some of the simplest tools were associated with habilis. Stone tools made using Aldewan technology were thought to be the earliest tool culture. Aldewan stone tools were very simply made, with just a few or even one flake or chip removed from the raw stone to increase usability. When using these tools, it seems that they were often single-use and then discarded or forgotten, as relatively few examples show signs of being retouched, since these tools' shapes tended to be determined by the type of material being used rather than what H. Habilis was using them for, it is believed that there wasn't much prior planning involved. Handy Hab was understood to be polygamous, living in groups with multiple males being responsible for protecting a larger number of females and young from predation and danger. 
a body covering fur adorned both sexes, with reconstructions putting males as being significantly larger in size than females, a trait known as sexual dimorphism, thought to be the scavengers of meat when possible rather than actual hunters. Habilis teeth show sign of wear and tear, possibly showing signs of holding meat in the mouth and using a tool in one hand to cut it. This has been put forward as a potential sign of handedness or being left or right-handed, associated with significant reorganization of the brain and brain function lateralization. Old Hab could have been a southpaw. Based on the growth patterns of dental samples, Homo habilis had a quicker maturation rate than modern humans, similar to non-human apes of today. A brain larger than the Australopithecans suggested increased cognizance, although the size was only somewhere between 500 and 900 cc's, significantly smaller than later species and modern humans. Some of the adaptations found in the limbs and hands and feet could indicate that Habilis still retained the capability of a skilled climber. As with any discussion of the distant past, there must be qualifiers used as they are competing theories. With Homo habilis, however, you may have noticed we were extra careful not to state any certainties. That is because even from the very first discovery, habilis has been hotly debated. When the first evidence was described, it was almost lumped in with Australopithecus africanus, the only other early hominin known then, as the fossils were similar. Other researchers claimed the remains were just a mix of different species and didn't represent a brand new member of Homo. Later, other discoveries suggested that even Homo habilis should be split into two separate species, one maintaining the Homo habilis name and the other becoming Homo rudolfensis. A set of skulls found in the early 2000s show similarities to all Homo groups contemporary to habilis, leading to the idea that all early Homo species should be incorporated into H. erectus. Much of what is supposed about the societal behavior and actions of habilis are based on what we have seen in modern non-human apes such as baboons and chimpanzees. The degree of sexual dimorphism that is the basis for the claim of polygamy is dependent on the size of the fossils, and the sex of the fossils is also based on size and robustness of bones when there is a lack of more reliable evidence such as a pelvis. With all the theories that the different sized remains ascribed to H. habilis are actually other species, the suggestion of being polygamous could be argued. So, sorry certain viewers, we don't really know if we have harem kings as our ultimate ancestors. The limb structures preserved seem to show incompatible information. Some remains display adaptations that seem better suited to an arboreal lifestyle, while others show changes that could make life on open grasslands more likely. Hands and arms like the tree-going Australopithecans and legs possibly like H. erectus who was effective at long-distance travel. The tools that inspired the name of H. habilis have been shown to not be the first evidence of tool use. There have been older one tools discovered that date back to the very beginning of the existence of habilis, raising the possibility that these tools were inherited from previous ancestors unknown to us. There is an even older tool technology known as Lomequi, dated almost three and a half million years ago and attributed to Australopithecans. With so much about Homo habilis under so much debate, you might think that the species is relegated to the not sure about that pile of anthropology. You would be very wrong. The arguments, theories, debates, and crazy ideas are also overwhelming because the very idea of H. habilis is so important. Possibly the earliest step we took. This early example of our genus could hold the answers to so many questions that science has asked for so long. H. habilis has been under scientific fire from the moment the species was described, with fossils being reorganized into different species, physiology estimated one way and then another, behavior and complexity of their society questioned, and tools so central to their identity found across millions of years, so much of what makes Homo habilis is up for debate. And that is what makes H. habilis so important, to put it poetically and dramatically. Why wouldn't we argue over where the soul of our species began? Like watching us talk about history both near and far? Check out some of our other videos and like and subscribe to A Day in History. Maybe one day we will talk about the starting line of the human race and how not to come in last place.